Okay, so I'm going to be covering the Cold Pro franchise over the next coming weeks. Starting off tonight with the first movie, Cold Pro, which came out in 2006, followed by two other sequels. Um, the second movie, which is available to rent, and then the third movie, I've looked on like Amazon and eBay and any you know second-hand movie sites that I know of, and there is no region free copies of this movie that exist um and i've heard you know that cold pro 3 is a prequel which seeing this first movie i'm really there's a lot of interesting ideas and there's a very inter uh, there's a it has a lot of potential for a prequel so i am really looking forward to watching uh, cold pro 3 if i can you know get my hands on that movie which i'm gonna i'm, I'm gonna continue you know looking around uh, at sites, seeing if I you know, if, if I can find it and all that, because there's a really interesting flashback in this movie at the end where you uh, where you discover also yes yeah, sports discussion like this movie came in 2006, um, and this is a Norwegian winter slasher movie. Which um, going to this movie, I knew very minimal about it. Like I knew it was a slasher movie, and I was sold. Since you know, slasher is my favorite subgenre of horror. I'm a sucker for slasher movies. I love the damn genre. So obviously, you know, this was right up my alley, and I love foreign horror as well. I think there's some great, there's some great titles in the horror genre. You know, that are you know foreign movies. So yeah, of course, you know, this movie, you know, this movie was. You know, I was going to check this movie out in one way or another. But yeah, there's a flashback towards the end of this movie where you find out that you know that his parents were the ones that actually you know that actually killed him well seemingly killed him like in, in their minds they think that he, he is dead because you know they're the ones that pushed you know that pushed the snow on him and you know and all that at the um in the opening sequence but then you find out there's like there's more to that story than than we are led to believe and i'm sure there's an entire you know like history and, and past that will be discovered in the third movie which yeah so yeah i'm looking forward to checking out that third movie i'm looking forward you know to seeing where this franchise where this franchise does go because this first movie while it is very generic like it doesn't do anything that hasn't already been done in the slasher genre it doesn't try to you know step outside that this i think is a really fun slasher movie um, once it gets going, it does take a while to get going, like it's not until maybe the 50 minute mark when our first kill in the movie actually happens, because the first 40 minutes is all character development and is all, you know, story building. Um, but as far as our characters go, like, like I didn't hate them, I just don't think there's anything really memorable about them, I don't remember any of the characters' names. I think the decision making in the movie, like for actually kind of going to this hotel, I mean, like that I understand, you know, like their friend has, you know, has broken, has broken their leg, they see this, you know, they see this hotel or this shelter, they go there, like to me, that makes sense. I think the movie has a great build up and a great setup to where it does eventually lead, um, but yeah, it's um, like it. It just felt very. It just felt very generic. This movie felt like Frozen meets Wrong Turn. Um, like Wrong Turn might be the wrong might you know might be the wrong title, but just be, it reminded me of Wrong Turn because you know there's all you know traps set up in the snow and I thought that was, that was a really nice you know that was a really nice addition to this movie. Um, but yeah, the characters just aren't really memorable, and like you, the first 40 minutes are dedicated, you know, to characterization and to character development, and there's just nothing that you can really grab onto as being likable characters because a lot of them, like a lot of them, just seem like just seem like douchebags. Um, like our final girl in the movie, like she isn't too bad, but like I said, there's nothing really, there's nothing that I really grabbed onto about her character. Like she isn't, you know, the best final girl that I have seen in a slasher movie. But like I thought she was fine. I thought the way her character, you know, progressed throughout this movie wasn't too bad. Um and I like and I, and I thought, you know, that she gave a performance as well as everybody else in this movie. I thought every, I thought everybody gave a like a a pretty reasonable and you know and solid performance in this movie. 
Um, like our final girl, yeah, she does, you know, she does make a comeback. She does, I guess, serve herself as being the final girl. Like I thought, the final battle in the movie, you know, between, you know, between our our uh, our villain and our final girl. You know, like I, I, thought, I thought that was a pretty cool, you know, sequence. Um, I'm looking forward to where the sequel does go with her story. I'm hoping there is more character development. That is, you know, that we do learn more about her character, you know, in the sequel than we do in this one because there's not really, there's not really a whole lot that we learn about her character in this one. So yeah, I hope that the uh, Cold Prey Two does, you know, does dive more into who she is as a character and into her past and and all of that, and just comes as flush it out as a more likable final girl. Because I felt like that's what this movie would have would have benefited from. Like if you look at all the best final girls in you know in horror cinema history, like Nancy from A Nightmare on Elm Street, Sydney from Scream, like if you just look at those two, like we remember them because their characters, like not only did they have a great introduction in the orig in their original movie, but they had other sequels that dived more into what they are doing now. And that's, that's what made them, that's what made them like boys, they finally, they face their fears. And while that's kind of, in a way, what does happen here, um, she just, yeah, she just didn't stand out in my mind as being, you know, as being, as being, like, on that final girl list, on, like, the best of, uh, list. And now talking about the kills, because, you know, this is a slash movie, and, you know, there are going to be kills in it. The kills, majority of them... Uh, off screen, um, like there are some cool kills, but they're pretty basic. It's pretty like basic, just hack and slash kills. There's nothing really, you know, creative. Um, there's nothing really creative or inventive about the kills in this, you know. But like, I thought for the most part, I mean, I thought there was some great sound design on the kills. Like, I can say that, but like, as far as it being, you know, like a gruesome and gory, and if you want gory kills, this movie. Like, you, there is some blood in here, there is some blood and gore for sure, but for the most part it's all, it's all off screen stuff that you see, and it's a lot of the aftermath that you see, like there is one kill in this that does stand out to me where, uh, uh, where she gets hit in the back with the pickaxe, and then, and then she gets taken out in the freezing cold, and like, that I think is the worst way to go, like I think that's, one of the deaths, I think, in a horror movie that would be like, that would be like a living hell. I think that would be, that's I think one of the worst ways, like, to go in a slash movie. You have it kind of really, a really drawn out kill. Like, I think, yeah, I think that's probably the one kill in this movie that really stood out to me as being, as being effective. But at the same time, it's not really all that memorable. I mean, there's some really, like, I, I think, I think it's effective in a way where it's a, like, it's a drawn out and it's it's the, like that. It's not a fast pace. It's not like a quick, you know, hack and slash and then done. It's 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 like it's a drawn, it's a drawn out kill for maybe like a three to four minute sequence. Um, and I thought that I thought the idea behind it I think was creative. Um, and then the other kills in the movie, you know, like it's it's all pretty basic stuff that that it. I don't, I don't really I don't really remember any of the kills in this movie. Um, as far as the killer goes in this movie, I think this is a really iconic design. I think this is a really creative design for this setting um, and f and for this killer. I think it, I think um, the, the the killer in this movie was definitely was definitely in intimidating. He definitely did give off you know off that off that vibe that this is the guy that you don't want to fuck with. So uh, yeah. I see. I, I really like the kill in this movie. I really like. I like the direction. I like the performances. Um, yeah, I think like as a whole, I enjoyed this movie. As far as it being a movie that I, I'm going to rewatch. Like, I, I think I think this is a cool idea. I think mean, I think this is a cool idea having you know, having a slasher movie based in the winter time and in the snow. I think all of that is really. I think is really cool, but. We've seen slasher movies in the snow before. So, I mean, this movie doesn't, like, on that hand, it still doesn't do anything creative. Um, but, yeah, this is a movie, like, I might watch maybe once a year. But, like, I'm in no rush to watch it because it didn't really, 
just, it felt very, very generic, very cliche. Like I said, it had a good build up, good direction. Like, and there's a lot of stuff to like in this movie. But as far as it being, as far as it being something, something new, something different, especially with this concept, I feel like there is more that this movie could have done. But who knows? Maybe the sequels might, you know, might go bigger, better, which is you know what I'm hoping. Uh, we will see on that. But um, yeah, Cold Prey as a whole, I enjoyed it. Um, if you guys have seen Cold Prey, uh, let me know down in the comments. What did you think of it? Did you like it? Did you think it was mad? Or did you really not like it? Let me know all your thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below. So anyways, guys, hope you have a good rest of your day, evening or night. Wherever you are, and I will see you in the next video. Alright, bye.